Minister says restrictions on poultry needed. National Court dismisses contempt case against Electoral Commissioner. And lay police boss voted head of FSV Action Committee. This is the National MTV News with Mary Bertulo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for Tuesday's news. Papua New Guinea's poultry industry is under threat from the increased number of imported poultry products. Today, the newly appointed Minister for Agriculture and Livestock, Benny Allen, arrived in Leh for a consultation meeting with members of the Poultry Industries Association. The minister said a ban will not be imposed on poultry products. However, restrictions will be set. The Minister for Agriculture and Livestock, Benny Allen, arrived in late today to meet with members of the Poultry Industry Association. They were welcomed by staff at the Mainland Holdings head office where the meeting was held. Papua New Guinea's poultry industry is faced with economic and biosecurity threats with the increased number of imported poultry products. Minister Allen says the increase was due to a gazettal which came into effect this year. Under that uh, gazettal, uh, it opened do doors uh, uh, for uh, importers in Papua New Guinea to import uh, uh, poultry uh, chicken from uh, anywhere in the world. This was the main concern raised by the PIA. An amendment to the Gazettal has been drafted. This will impose restrictions on imports. What we are trying to, uh, to adopt now is uh, the New Zealand standard. So what it means is that New Zealand has the highest standard that we, Papua New Guinea, uh, we are currently very free for many of the pests and diseases that is on the other side of the border. Only imports that meet the New Zealand standards will be allowed. The banning of poultry imports, however, is yet to be considered. At this point in time, uh, we have not uh, you know, given consideration to banning anything as, as yet, whether it be egg or uh, poultry, uncooked uh, uh, poultry. But what we are doing is uh, we are uh, amending the uh, gazettal. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lee. National Planning and Monitoring Minister Richard Maru has applauded moves taken by Innovative Agro Industry to develop a local dairy farm in Central Province. In a recent visit to the Ilimo farm, Minister Maru was briefed about the facility's progress, which aims to have dairy products available for the local market by January 2018. The national government has a 20% stake in the project, with the Central Provincial Government having a 30% interest. Minister Maru was pleased with development so far and reaffirmed the national government's commitment to reducing the importation of dairy products, which total up to around 400 million kina annually. The National Court in Waigani has dismissed a contempt case against the Electoral Commissioner to disqualify the counting of 84 disputed boxes in the Southern Highlands Regional Seat. The court stated that there should be no interference with the decision made earlier by Electoral Commissioner Patilius Gamato. The 84 disputed boxes are currently locked up at the Mendi Police Station. The 84 disputed boxes have been the center of argument between sitting Governor William Powie and the candidate running second, Joe Cobble. Yesterday, Justin Colin McKyle ended down the decision striking out the order sought by Mr. Cobble. Justice Mackay's decision means the court now declines to grant the others and upholds Electoral Commission's decision to have the remaining 84 boxes be counted as instructed earlier. Mackay said the aggrieved parties should seek the court's assistance after the election process is completed through the Court of Dispute of Returns. The 84 boxes are locked at Mendy Police Station. The decision yesterday now directs the provincial retaining officer to include the 84 boxes for counting and must be transported to Mount Agen for the counting process to be completed before a winner is declared. Jack Lopave, Jr., National MTV News. Le Metropolitan Superintendent Anthony Wagambi has been appointed as chairperson of the Family and Sexual Violence Action Committee. The decision has given prominence to the committee work and it is hoped the police chief will add a new dimension to the committee's plans and strategies. 
The inclusion of Anthony Wagambi as the chairman of the Morbe Family and Sexual Violence Committee comes at a time when Lay City continues to report a steady flow of family violence and sexual offences. This inclusion hopes to strengthen the work of the committee now that they have a direct link to the Lay police boss. In Lay, the RPNGC's sexual offences squad has a long list of cases and also a steady record of convictions over the last five years. But those who work here say more needs to be done. Right now, they don't know where family support centre is or uh, if we have uh, safe houses in Lay. The appointment also comes with other good news. Donations from the Chinese government of two vehicles from the same batch given to the Electoral Commission before the elections. One of the vehicles has been given to the Lay Sexual Offences Squad for its work. Now, this is a new challenge for the Metropolitan Superintendent. He will be expected to draw on his previous experiences in community awareness and police involvement to make this successful. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay. A resident in Port Mosby's Rainbow suburb was shot this afternoon following a raid by NCD police. Eyewitnesses told MTV News the young man was not part of the vendors who sold betel nut in front of the Rainbow Stop and Shop area. He was shot in the chest and rushed to the Gerhu General Hospital before dying moments later. Residents at Rainbow remain in shock following the shooting of the youth. High witnesses say NCD police came in two different vehicles and chased vendors who sell betel nut at the main bus stop area. MTV News was told the victim is innocent. Vendors believe the bitter not ban in the city as a six week grace period and also question the manner police approach vendors. Eyewitnesses say three shots were fired with the last attempt injuring the youth in his middle section of the body. Three blood time all shoot. Two blood yeah, all over Nadinam. Not a blood last one yeah, all shoot him. Yeah. Relatives of the victim were notified and rushed through Garu Hospital. However, the young lad had passed on. So I took him to the hospital. How sick he is. I came inside and tried to pass him my penis. Relatives are calling on those responsible to explain what has transpired. Kind boy, one of something okay. You probably go on market land. You serve on market. I am innocent man. I am coming up nothing. I am campaigning for a lot of them all family, but no one has something on working. We pay losing to die land with your line out line. All that can take responsibility to solve that something. Vendors are also disappointed as to why police left the scene after injuring the youth. Sometimes people go and what? Then people foul it. Then people no solve them. What should the man against you? Then people like some plate number, look hard. Now one of them mad. Then all take off finish. What should the man solve? Run away. So this time people have me. I'm carrying them go low. People carrying them go down low. Geru, Geru, Geru. I was sick. Trying to pass away blame. All eyewitnesses will be making statements to the police tomorrow. Jack Lapave, Jr. National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. Twelve students in NCD have been announced as winners of the Kumul Petroleum Holdings 2018 calendar competition. With National Literacy Week this week, KPHL General Manager, Stakeholder Relations, Ian Maru, says giving the opportunity for underprivileged children can help lift the poor literacy rate in our country. The 12 were chosen among 40 others. It was a small but very significant event for the 10 out of 12 students who joined the KPHL staff this morning for the announcement and presentation. Embracing literacy and providing avenues was the key message by KPHL to enhance learning for underprivileged children. And these are underprivileged kids, so we thought we'd give them the opportunity to understand what uh, literacy is all about and the team of this year's uh, Literacy Week. So, Life PNG Care National Director Colin Parker says such achievement can be a difference for these children. He says literacy is becoming a challenge for many, but the small presentation will be an inspiration for the winners. So for us as LPC, uh, we just do what we can to impact the community, especially children and youths. So we see that uh, this significant contribution, it adds value for these children's education. 
Papua New Guinea has seen a slow but steady improvement in its literacy rate. From 4 to 8 September, schools throughout the country will celebrate National Literacy Week. Re literacy is all about the ability to comprehend, you read, and to understand uh, numbers or even the words. So I hope uh, to this competition and what you want can inspire you and the other kids as well to continue to read because it helps you to open your world. The 12 winning entries will be used in KPHL's 2018 calendar. The entries include illustrations depicting this year's National Literacy Week team, Quality Literacy, Quality Life. The winners received Theodis vouchers of 100 kina each for age categories 6 to 15 years and 200 kina for 16 to 20 years. KPHL for our drawing and for 2018 and thank you for helping us for our stationery for doing for 2018. KBHL has been supporting life PNG care since 2015. Jack Lapava Jr., National MTV News. All Girls School Notre Dame Secondary in Western Highlands Province was privileged to receive 30 computers today from the Provincial Education Division. This is the first school to be delivered with computers after the swearing-in ceremony of the Provincial Assembly last Friday. The computers are the result of the Wingti government's investment in education. For the first time, female students of the Notre Dame Secondary School will have hands-on computers coinciding with what they have been learning in class in theory form. Western Highlands Provincial Education Board Chairman Lawrence Penner and the newly appointed Deputy Governor Michael Mai officially handed over the computers and the monitors to the school today. Penner told the 700 plus students that computer is a learning tool for education in this age. That education is the, is the most important thing and uh, to make education possible for everybody and possible for everybody to access education, governor was on the run from one end of the province to the other. Student President Catherine Korowa appreciated the gesture and said she will be using the computers for the first time to do her school work. Notre Dame School is a Catholic-run school and is less than 20 minutes drive out of Mount Hagen City. They are competing with other schools in the country, but technology is something lacking like many schools in the rural parts of PNG. Today, the empty computer lab will be filled with these computers. The school will receive another 30 at a later date. These computers will not only help the current grade 9s, 10s, 11s and 12s, but also the other girls who will attend this school in the near future. The newly appointed Deputy Governor Michael Mai encouraged the students to engage in serious learning and be competitive. Mai said computers are a modern learning tool and schools in PNG have no excuse not to be using it for learning. Technology is increasing. Civilization is being increased. I said with a country like Papua New Guinea, we need to catch up with what uh, all other first world countries are doing. And for us to do that, there is one way that can help us to keep us to get that far is to do like a uh, you know, computer. Notre Dame will now take up IT lessons and sit for the exams like other schools in the country. Vasinata Yama, National MTV News, Mount Hagen. In its efforts to continue promoting food security within mine communities, Barrack New Guinea Limited has introduced a new program aimed at developing an interest in agriculture amongst the younger population. The project, called AgriKids, is coordinated by Barrack's Community Development Section. The Community Development Section conducted training on compost with students from the Aumbi Elementary School last week, a pilot school for the AgriKids program. Compost training is an improved farming method which Pogera Joint Venture demonstrates to local communities within the valley to increase the soil fertility for higher and quality food yields. Pogera Joint Venture Community Development Senior Officer Peter Tumun said agriculture is a sustainable venture and it is important that relevant agricultural skills are delivered to young children at an early age when they are active in learning. So, 
and by Mr. Tosem, this is like the first part of the training. But you go, you go in up all planning, Kage Logaren, all Kage now, or Salim now, and this is like by Pinisna, school by Mibla Trim Best, school by school, and continue to work in this life. Pogera Joint Venture will also assist Town Bay Elementary School with building materials for a temporary nursery with blue drums, seedling trays, and seeds to start off with. 16 years, Miss Avatista, so Minus, I look at life. First time you look at you like him, this is a good activity. You play a game, you must run. The community development team will make regular visits and provide technical advice and support as it moves to engage other elementary schools within the special mine lease communities. TIC Mr. Isara and the school chairman Pastor One Piece Kawi were both grateful that Pogera Joint Venture has taken the initiative to promote such vital skills to the younger population. Helen Sea, National MTV News. In preparation for the COP23 summit in Germany in November, the Climate Change Development Authority hosted a workshop to discuss the National Determined Contributions, also known as NDCs. NDCs for PNG were given in January 2016 to the UN Convention on Climate Change and was the first country to do so, showing PNG's commitment to combating climate change. Presentations will also be held on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and the National Strategy for Responsible Sustainable Development, also known as STARS, a strategy by the Department of National Planning and Monitoring. And now a look at the finance news. The Kino closed unchanged at 0.3125 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your kina was buying 0.305 US dollars, 0.3796 Australian dollars, 0.2526 Euro and 33.09 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold, cocoa and copper closed higher, coffee closed the day lower. Palm oil, crude oil and copper closed the day higher. And on the stock markets, the Dow Jones closed 39 points higher. The ASX closed four points higher, and the All Ordinaries closed four points higher as well. Here with National MTV News, flooding causes state of emergency in parts of the United States. World leaders meet to discuss North Korea and another addition to the British royal family. The details after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. Turning overseas now, a state of emergency has been declared in Florida as yet another hurricane makes its way to the west. Category 4 Hurricane Emma is sweeping towards the Caribbean, carrying winds in excess of 130 kilometers per hour and are said to be even stronger. Residents of Florida are stocking up on supplies, having witnessed the destruction caused by Hurricane Harvey in Texas across Florida empty as Irma takes aim at the U.S. If you wait until the last minute, there's nothing to be found and it's like total chaos. After Harvey, even hurricane veterans are preparing for the worst. Our hearts are in Houston right now, but uh, our reality is here in Key West. Florida Governor Rick Scott declaring a state of emergency and urging residents to get their disaster plan ready. A state of emergency already declared in Puerto Rico. Plywood and batteries flying off shelves before the storm hits here Wednesday. The National Guard has been activated, schools have been closed, and workers across this island have been ordered to cut their days short tomorrow so they can get ready. American Airlines adding flights to get tourists out of Irma's path and cruise ships rerouting to dodge the storm. Tonight, FEMA at the ready. 400 people on standby. Giant containers stuffed with supplies delivered to the U.S. Virgin Islands, where Irma could hit as early as tomorrow night. 60 people, including 20 children, already evacuated by the National Guard. And now the 100,000 people who live there stuck. If you're here, you're here at this point. Greg and Ashley Balzianis and their two sons are from Kansas, but now live in St. Croix. Really the worst possible thing that can happen is the roof gets ripped off and that you just need to be prepared for flying debris, everything in your house to be completely soaked. Their only choice, batten down the hatches. And as the United States braces for another hurricane, the recovery effort after Hurricane Harvey continues. It's estimated around 85% of homeowners affected by Hurricane Harvey have no flood insurance. 
Houston today, the Army Corps of Engineers starting to ease the flow of water from those swollen reservoirs. But it's too late for thousands of homes in its path, many now underwater. Now this area could potentially be like this for another four, five, six weeks. Uh, more than a month, possibly. Yes, absolutely, more than a month. 85% of residents in Houston don't have flood insurance. Homeowners like Bill and Nana Cotton, who were flooded by that reservoir. There's thousands of people that don't have flood insurance, and we're told you didn't need any because you're not going to flood plane. They had just hours to evacuate. Firefighters carrying Nana's 97-year-old mother to safety. Harvey didn't flood your house? No, not at all. No, it was a reservoir. The city made a, a calculated decision that they were going to sacrifice a number of houses for the greater good of the rest of Houston. FEMA now paying for this hotel room, but the Cottons are hoping the city will help pay for them to rebuild. Where the water has receded, they're salvaging what they can and starting over, but it's a long road ahead. The United States has urged the UN Security Council to take the strongest possible measures against North Korea after its latest nuclear test. Speaking at an emergency meeting, U.S. Representative Nikki Haley said Pyongyang is begging for war and called for urgent action. A day after North Korea's most powerful nuclear test, the South displayed its might. Missiles were launched from the ground and the air. It was a test drill, South Korea showing off how it could attack Pyongyang's nuclear site. This is a strong reaction from a country that for months now has been desperately trying to avoid conflict in the Korean Peninsula. But in New York, at an emergency UN Security Council meeting, South Korea's closest ally said Pyongyang seemed to be heading the other way. Nuclear powers understand their responsibilities. Kim Jong-un shows no such understanding. His abusive use of missiles and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. Across the room, though, there was an opposing view from a country often seen as North Korea's friend. China urged a diplomatic solution. China will never allow chaos and war on the peninsula. A hydrogen bomb is vastly more powerful than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. And North Korea says that's what its leader is looking at here. The country has conducted six nuclear tests so far, but the pace has really accelerated since Kim Jong-un came to power. And that means defences have to be strengthened. This is America's latest anti-missile system designed to shoot down enemy rockets. It's now being deployed in South Korea, a country that continues to build up its arsenal even as it hopes to not have to use it. The United Nations Human Rights Chief has criticized Myanmar's de facto leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, for failing to protect the country's Rohingya Muslims. 87,000 people have fled Myanmar to Bangladesh to escape the violence. She is just two days old and completely oblivious to the mayhem outside. Her parents are Rohingyas forced out of their homes in Myanmar when their village was attacked, allegedly by the army. The baby's mother, Hasina, was in her final stages of pregnancy when they made the strenuous journey across the border to Bangladesh. We fled and crossed the river by boat and then came here. We were very scared about what the military would do to us. After coming here, we heard that our house has been burnt down. Do you think you'll ever be able to take your baby back home, back to Myanmar? Everyone has left. There's no one there. We cannot go back. Home is now this vast refugee camp where they live cheek by jowl with thousands of Rohingyas. Many of them are eating their first proper meal in days. Bangladesh is now struggling to cope with the growing influx of Rohingyas. Hundreds streaming in by the hour and more waiting to follow. This is what set off the exodus. Satellite images obtained by Human Rights Watch show entire villages burned down inside Myanmar. Fresh smoke could be seen again today, billowing into the sky, apparently from houses that were torched. More than 400 Rohingyas have been killed in 10 days, the worst violence in a generation. It is hard to independently verify the situation. Access is severely restricted. 
but in the refugee camps, it is apparent that the Rohingyas are here to stay. To England now, and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have announced they are expecting their third child. Kensington Palace confirmed the news in a statement, saying the Queen and both families are delighted with the news. Duchess of Cambridge last week with her husband and Prince Harry. No hint then of the announcement of a third baby for William and Catherine. Kensington Palace was forced to disclose the pregnancy this morning because the Duchess had had to pull out of a public engagement because of acute morning sickness, the condition she experienced for both her previous pregnancies. She's now resting at Kensington Palace. According to the statement, the Queen, opening the Queen's Ferry crossing near Edinburgh this morning, and other members of the royal family are delighted with the news. The baby will be the Queen's sixth great-grandchild and will be fifth in line of succession to the throne. It's more than four years now since the birth of Prince George in July 2013. This is an important week for him. He's due to start at his new school in London, something his mother certainly won't want to miss. The couple's second child, Princess Charlotte, was born in May 2015. She's fourth in the line of succession, and she will retain that position even if the new baby is a boy. On a visit by the Cambridges to Poland a few weeks ago, Catherine joked about having another baby when she was presented with a gift intended for a baby. It didn't seem significant at the time. Today, Prince Harry said he was delighted at the prospect of being an uncle again. The news that there's to be a third child for the Cambridges comes just as William is beginning full-time royal duties. Soon, the team of four will become five. Kensington Palace hasn't said when the new baby is due, but it must be assumed that it will be around March of next year. Here with National MTV News, True Guy Sports is next. We'll give you an update on the PNG Games. Stay tuned. True Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. With the seventh PNG Games nearing, the PNG Games Council remains steadfast in delivering the games on schedule without further delays. Chairman of the Games Organizing Committee, John Susuve, confirmed today that the completion for construction of the venues has been set for the 31st of October. With less than 82 days to the opening ceremony, the accreditation report has registered over 9,000 games participants from 22 provinces and is expected to double in the coming weeks. Host Organizing Committee Chairman John Susuve said with the support of the national government, the PNG Games Council is certain of delivering the forthcoming games in the true Melanesian spirit of friendship, fair play and unity. The highlight of the closing ceremony is the 2018 Commonwealth Games Baton Relay, making its appearance where international audience from across the globe will catch a glimpse of the PNG National Games. So far, 13 provinces have paid 10,000 kina bond fee for their accommodation during the Games, while others still yet to submit their fee. Shane Saroya, National MTV Sports. To the NRL now, Melbourne Storm captain Cameron Smith has revealed why he never joined the Brisbane Broncos. Though he wanted to move to the Broncos in 2014, he was asked by his wife to remain with the Storm. As they head into the NRL Finals this weekend, Smith will go down as an immortal as he plays his 365th game against the Eels, surpassing Broncos legend Darren Lockyer. True Guy Sports continues after these messages. Stay tuned. True Guy Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. National Volleyball President Kila Dick says this year's national championships will be played in tiers in a break from previous tournaments. He says this change comes after the federation changed its status to PNG Volleyball Association. Under the new leadership, PNG Volleyball Association Inc. is expected to bring together some of the best volleyball players in the country to lay for the national championships. President Kiladik says the game structure has been changed and will use a different format. The national championships for any sport right across the country is the, the highest level of competition. So when we say the highest level of competition, 
we should not be sending two, three, or four teams in that in an association. And over the years, that has happened in volleyball. So we need to change some of these approaches. Number two is that we have to be competitive in the Oceania and the Pacific region. The competition will be split into two different events where Open Championships will be held in Ley and Under-21 event to be played in Port Moresby. In a couple of uh, days time we're going to have the Open National Championship in Ley. That will be on the 16th, 17th and 18th during the independence celebrations. And it has been the, the dates of our National Championship over the years. Some recent day, you know, some form of uh, executives move it to November and October and December and stuff like that. But I've been very adamant to make sure that our national championship comes back to its original times, and this is during the independence celebrations. One of the Federation's biggest achievements to date is Federation's implementation of its new constitution, which President Killer described as a milestone. We, uh, we incorporated the whole constitution. And, uh, and now we are going to be recognized as PNG Volleyball Association Inc., which is uh, it's a big milestone after 43 years, so I'm, I'm very proud of that. The National Volleyball Championships will be played over the long independence weekend for the Open Division and to be followed by under-21 championships in Port Moresby. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. To football, the New Zealand All Whites beat Solomon Islands in the OFC Stage 3 qualifiers to continue their 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifier journey. New Zealand coach Anthony Hudson expected a tough encounter on the return and was very pleased his side held off a determined Solomon Islands to make it through Stage 3 unbeaten. The All Whites will play the winner of the Komna Ball region in November. Antonio Balestra made it four wins out of five for French competitors in this season's foot golf majors on Sunday. Foot golf is a combination of soccer and golf where players kick a ball along a fairway with the aim of placing it into a hole in a few strokes as possible. The competition was won by 24-year-old Frenchman Balestra who carded a final round of 63 and an overall total of 20 under par. 127 players from 18 countries took part in the Orlando Major, including former Argentina international Roberto Ayala. And that ends Trukai Sports. Here with the details for the next 24 hours when we return. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Here's a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. We begin in the southern region, Port Mosby. Cloudy periods with a chance of some rain and drizzle with a top temperature of 30 degrees. Partly sunny and windy for Daru. Some rain and showers with cloudy and windy periods for Alota. Rain, showers and cloudy periods expected for Popandeta, a top of 31 degrees. To the Momasa region, Lei and Wau, cloudy with rain and showers with a top of 30. Fine, although partly cloudy for Medang. Fine and partly cloudy with a chance of some light showers expected in Wibek and Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands region, thundery showers expected in Lorangao, Kimbe and Buka. Fine becoming cloudy for Kaviang, Kokopo and Rabaul. And in the Highlands region, cloudy periods expected in Mount Hagen. Rain and showers for Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabag. A look at the shipping forecast, but first there is a strong wind warning for all small ships for tonight and tomorrow. A current strong wind warning for all coastal waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Yule Island to Hood Point and from eastern Milne Bay Islands to Cape Vogel to Finchafen, Vitia Strait, CRC to Long Island, including West New Britain. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Yule Island to Hood Point and with waters of eastern Milne Bay Islands to Cape Vogel to Fenchafen, seas 2 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Kiwai Island to Kerama and with waters of Samurai Island to western Milne Bay Islands, seas 1.5 to 2 meters. 
headquarters of Finchafen through Vitia Strait, Dampier Strait, including CSC Islands to Long Island, and with waters of West New Britain, seas 2.5 to 3 meters, waters of Long Island to Medang, Borgia, Wiwek, Aitape, Vanimo, and the northern PNG Indonesian border, and with waters of East New Britain to New Island to Bougainville, seas 0 0.5 to 1.3 meters, and waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas 0 0.5 to 1.5 meters. And a look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas for tonight and tomorrow. Coral Sea sees rather rough with southeasterly winds at 20 to 25 knots. Solomon Sea sees moderate to rather rough with southeasterly winds at 15 to 25 knots. Bismarck Sea sees moderate to rather rough with southeasterly winds at 25 to 34 knots. And the Pacific Ocean sees slight with northeast to clockwise winds at 10 to 15 knots. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And that's the way it is this Tuesday, the 5th of September 2017. On behalf of the MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night.